Hello again, Tube of Views. Good afternoon. And uh, so you can see we've got a red Mustang in the background here all jacked up. And uh, up on jack stands, I'm getting ready to do emergency brake cables. I had thought that I was going to do a video on this about how to replace these e-brake cables, but I'm not doing it on a hoist, which makes it really difficult to actually get underneath. I was actually trying some camera angles earlier, but at the very least, I can show you, you know, some of what we've done here. You can see the Maximum Motorsports uh, control arms and the uh, lowering springs. Obviously, nothing special done with the brakes. It's all just factory GT stuff. Um, oh, show me, move, gotta get out of the way. I hope you can see, you know, we got a set of Series 20s under there and some cherry bombs. And if you're looking closely, I'm sure you can see the Ford 9 inch in there that uh, we put in here a couple years ago uh, with some leaks that we'll have to address at some point in time. And then, uh, of course, stainless exhaust out back and so on and so forth. But I digress. Um, figured I would take the time since I'm not sure that I will be able to actually get a video of me replacing the e-brake cables on this uh, because I just am not up on a hoist and uh, you know that's uh, something that will come for me hopefully in the very near future but we shall see uh, at any rate I uh, figured I'd take this time to do some viewer questions and comments so, going to the list here, we will begin. So my first question uh, goes out to the blind redneck. And uh, he wanted me to do an update on the old 96.4 that you guys had seen in videos of, uh, videos of past. And unfortunately, you guys never did get to see that pickup and that project come to fruition. So... Basically what had happened was, what had happened was, you see, um, so after I did the door handles, uh, it's kind of about the last, I think that might have been one of the last videos I did before I kind of kind of shut things down. Um, I end up, we got ranch end bumpers front and rear, uh, Bluetooth stereo, we did some work on the interior, um, <clears throat> just some, you know, work here and there, we dressed it up, it was looking really nice. Uh, tinted the windows, it got Gibson exhaust and uh, cold air intake, uh, and it was just, it was a fantastic pickup. Absolutely loved that pickup. Guy came up to me one day and said, hey, I'll give you $6,500 for that pickup. And being that I had, you know, right around 3000 into the pickup and had gotten two good years out of it, I said, oh, okay, sure, I'll take $6,500. So, the story actually goes a little bit further than that. Sold the pickup to the guy. The guy ended up needing another pickup fixed um, and told me that he would trade me that pickup back for the work done on that pickup. So I actually took that pickup back in trade, but that's where the story gets a little funny. Had a guy working for me um, in the shop and um, uh, long and short of it, it didn't work out. He was from Georgia, he had come up here, he had no wheels. I kind of felt bad for the guy, even though he kind of pulled some shitties on me. And so I told him, hey, look, if you put the motor in this pickup for the guy that, uh, that traded me back, if you do, I told him, if you do the work on the, if you put the motor in that pickup, I'll give you that pickup, the white pickup, the 96, and uh, then you'll at least have a way to get back home. And I kind of wish I hadn't done it. I'm glad I did because, you know, I just kind of felt bad for him. You know, I, I had to fire him and he was stuck up here. He didn't have any friends or family really. And so, you know, I, it was kind of a means to an end. Really wish I had the pickup back and I'm sorry that I let it go. I just, I, I miss that pickup all the time. And I've been looking for another one for quite a while, but unfortunately the price of OBS Fords has gone through the roof and they're just about unattainable at this point in time at least in this area i don't know where it is or how it is where you guys are at so i've got a pen that doesn't write that's useful
magnetic beer koozie to the rescue. So, let's see. I've got some other questions here, but I'm kind of waiting on certain projects to come back around. And so, some of those questions will be answered all in due time. Just be patient with me as we get some of the projects out of the weeds. So, I keep getting asked, you know, are we ever going to see Roman, you know, Captain Commando, Matt, uh, Phil, any of those guys. Uh, Phil ended up getting married, kind of fell off the face of the earth. Uh, haven't heard from him in quite some time. Last I heard, he's back in Bismarck. Um, probably won't see him again. Roman, it's a good possibility. I still talk to him from time to time. Matt was actually just in the shop the other day. Uh, one of the things that I've learned in making these videos is that I just I'm trying to kind of keep to myself uh, You know when you start involving people it just things get muddy and so I try to I've been trying to just keep it to this and Definitely as much away from the business as I possibly can Try to focus as much as I can on the garage stuff and you know what Kayla and I are doing personally and not to say that you won't see other people in the videos We've actually got uh, a guy that does some really interesting stuff um, that may be featured in one of my videos at some point in time. He's thinking about starting a YouTube channel. He's an older guy. And so maybe give him a little little uh, props forward. Um, so anyways, uh, moving on. Uh, Chersey357 asks, can we see the tractors again? What happened to the Model A and the Alice Chalmers? Um, and that kind of ties into some other questions, but basically, maybe you may be able to see the tractors again. I'm not really sure. Mom and Dad were always a little bit funny about the videos up at the ranch, and I don't want to do anything to destroy a relationship. I'm uploading a video right now, so i got to keep the computer going. So, as far as the, uh, the Alice Chalmers dad sold that, um, he had a guy come and get it while I was gone, and him and I were on the outs, and it just, whatever. I'll just tell you that the Alice Chalmers is in the hands of a person who does nothing but restore Alice Chalmers tractors, and so the Alice Chalmers road grader is actually with him at this point in time. I've gotten to see it and sit on it. I haven't heard it run yet, which is kind of one of those things that I'm a little excited for. And it's been agreed that I'll get to run it around, you know, when that time comes. And I may actually get to video that. The Model A is still out at the ranch. And um, you guys very well may see that in a future video, but don't count on it within the next year. Well, possibly. Depends on how things go. But we shall see. So, Chersey, Chersey, whatever it is, 357. Um, hope that answers that. So... Cub Cadet Puller asks, is the Viking 60 still around? The simple answer to that is no, it is not. It, uh, it actually went to the crusher last year. They used some parts off it. Um, the current management of the ranch, they're not into keeping the older vehicles running, and so there's a lot of that stuff that has gone by the wayside. So moving on. Christopher White asks, is the 2240 and the 4230 still around? The 2240 is, the 4230 is not. The 4230 got sold and they upgraded to an 80, or no, excuse me, a 6410, I think it is, that they got into now. The 2240, however, still is, and Dad swears he will not get rid of it because you can't get another good little yard tractor like that that he can pull his disc around and tiller from mom's garden and so on and so forth for anything resembling a reasonable price. So, someday, maybe you might see it. I'm not going to say yes or no. But the 2240 is still around. The 4230 is not. Um, Larry Larry Kreit um, should have included him in that early earlier question, asked whatever happened to the A Deer and the Alice Grader. And I think I have duly answered that question. Um, let's see, Andy Rosanellos asked an interesting question, um, 
that uh, he thought it might be a little bit strange. I actually don't think it's that strange. He asked, what uh, boots did I wear when ranching that were comfortable? Um, and he apparently does some ranching uh, towards the Midwest there. Um, or farming or whatever the case may be. I don't have the comment pulled up and I got shorthand notes. But Andy Rosanellos, the best boots that I ever found when I was ranching as far as being durable, long lasting, and being reasonably comfortable were always my Red Wing Pecos. Um, and that's kind of my go-to. My comfortable boots are always either the Ariats or the Ropers, but I always found that the Ariat or the Roper boots never seem to last as long in anything, you know, kind of resembling a rough environment, but they were always more comfortable. The Red Wings always seem to serve me best in a rough, uh, in a rough situation. And when I come home, I wear Ariat slip-ons and I love them. You know, the best house shoes you can, you can get. They're a little bit expensive, well worth the money. And Blind Motorhead says that his favorite project was always Oscar and the Skidster. So as you guys may have picked up, Oscar has gone to that great big IDI place in the sky. Um, the frame ended up breaking on it and it got put out of its misery and so we replaced it with another pickup that uh, was also a 6.9 and we did some work on and scavenged some of the parts back and forth and then we had the Naked Lady and then there were some others in there. <clears throat> but, little, you know, a teaser for you guys, you may very well see the old Case 1835B skid steer much sooner than you think. Um, so, I'll leave that one open-ended. Uh, let's see. Um, so, Noah David asked if I could do a tour of my garage in the colder weather, and he asked if the drip tray, or does the drip tray for the funnels work as well as I had hoped. Um, the quick answer is yes. Um, I can do a quick video tour of my garage. The drip tray works exactly as I had hoped it would, with the exception that the plastic does not take to the oil very well and tends to deform. And so this hangs in there really well, but uh, you know, it's starting to get funny and so I'm gonna end up having to find a new drip tray. Other than that, absolutely love the drip tray. Um, Aside from all of those things, uh, I mean, the garage just kind of is what it is. Um, so, uh, yeah, always been a work in progress. I got my, you know, pictures of a Mustang that you may see at some point in time in the future. The list of things to do, memorabilia from vehicles that Kayla and I have had, including the, the uh, backing plates for the grinder. Um, and you know a door skin off of the race car um <clears throat> yes kayla and i raced for a short time uh well short time about seven years um and uh <laughs> another one of those things you guys missed out on and then i got my valve grinder and the scope and my tools and and uh unfortunately the old international harvester fridge quit cooling beer to a chilling degree and so it kind of went in the corner, but I think I found somebody to take care of that stuff. So, Noah, I hope that that satisfies your desire for a tour. Um, and you'll, of course, see more as time goes on. Um, let's see. Oh, uh, a Redneck's Life asks... What are the pictures on the ceiling of the garage? So I'm going to have to show you guys that, but uh, bear with me. We'll be right back as I take this camera off the tripod. So as you can see, there is a number of posters on the, uh, on the ceiling of the garage. Anybody that is an, of an older generation will probably remember back when you used to do that, when that was a popular thing, you know, you'd put posters on your ceiling. And I kind of grew up in that era where Kayla and I have tried to do that is, you know, when we go to a place, you know, we try to, you know, find 
something that will remind us of that place in the future. And um, so, you know, whether it's a beer sign, whether it's uh, pictures, whether it's memorabilia from, from Mustang Rally, you know, wherever it happens to be, um, we try to try to find something. So you'll notice the Cool Deadwood Nights uh, posters. And so we have one from each time we've been to Cool Deadwood Nights in Deadwood, South Dakota. It's a great time. Everybody should go. Unfortunately, they don't make uh, um, Mustang Rally posters, but they always do have the Gateway Mustang crew there and they give out posters. So we have those for the years that we've been there. Uh, the the uh, Cobra poster is actually from when Kayla and I went to Vegas and, um, or went to California, bought the Explorer, stopped in Vegas, and uh, went to the Carroll Shelby Museum. Uh, you'll notice the splatter on that, and that's actually from when I was doing some, some buffing on a vehicle. Um, the, uh, the kitten with the uh, having fun once, it was awful. That actually is pretty meaningful to me. I bought that after I put a 23 tea bucket in the ditch after a nasty wheel stand. And it sat right here in this spot. <clears throat> and I figured I needed a poster to remind me why I do not do such things. But regardless, that poster is a reminder of that. Um, and last, but not least, <clears throat> I got a uh, question from Wells Villas, or Wells Villas, however you do that. And he asks, what is the meaning of my channel name, Wagner59270? Um, when I started a YouTube account, I did not expect to do, you know, any real videos. I was just, I started it to watch some videos, and so I just needed a username. And so what I used was an old nickname that was given to me um, through high school and college. However it worked out, and the people that called me this, called me Wagner, were not even related people. They didn't even know each other. But uh, it just, it was kind of a name that stuck. And uh, so I got called Wagner quite a bit. And so naturally, when I did the YouTube channel, I called it Wagner59270 for my nickname and for my zip code. So there really is no great big deep meaning um, behind that, but uh, that is the meaning of that. So I uh, will cover more viewer questions in a future video. And uh, in the meantime, I have a question for you guys. Uh, do you prefer a how-to format? Do you guys like it better when I just show you some of the projects and the things and go for drives and the dogs? Or would you prefer that I stick to a, uh, a more informative format? Would you, would you like me to do more how-tos? What do you want to see me work on? Because I'm always buying vehicles, selling vehicles, working on this, working on that. And, you know, it'd be kind of fun, I think, to maybe tailor some of that around what you guys actually want to see, provided it's something that I can actually make some money on and do something with, and it's not just, uh, not just uh, me spending money to make videos. Um, so, yeah, you guys let me know in the comments. Feel free to ask more questions, as many as you like, uh, and I will answer them all in due time as I have time, still waiting on this video to upload, which is being slow, but I digress. Come on. Until a future video, keep doing all of the YouTubery things that you guys have done thus far. Rate, comment, and subscribe, and I hope to see you guys again soon.